what is an embedded system yeah students can you respond sir it is a combination of hardware and software correct it's combination of both hardware and software and uh, oh, where is it exactly that we use these embedded systems iot is yes iot is very good that? come again chandramohan when we design a chip sir. yes when we design a chip correct now can you tell me the applications of this embedded system arduino sir okay arduino and then raspberry pi raspberry pi very good okay and then I think most of you have used this uh, Raspberry Pi for your mini projects, right? You worked on these, you worked on the circuits, you worked on the programming part, right? All of you should have uh, a fair amount of information or knowledge about embedded systems. So basically, uh, we say a system is something which uh, performs a particular task, okay, which it is designed for. It could be uh, probably a water pump okay or probably uh, you know it can be it can be our vision okay the eyes that we see through so it's it's a complex system right, through which images are analyzed and then the, it is sent to brain and brain recognizes the type of colors and you know um, all all this happens okay just within a split of a second so we expect the same thing to happen in our systems, right? So a system is specifically meant for a particular task. Okay, right. So let us just look into uh, what exactly that we are going to learn in this lab. Is the screen visible to all of you? No, sir. Yes, able to see now. Right. Uh, so this is your ML system design lab, okay, and uh, the course code is 20 ECL67, and uh, it's about one and a half credit uh, course, and uh, as you all know, it's for about three hours and uh, 50 marks, 50 will be from internal and 50 from uh, external, and both will be combined and made as uh, 50. 25 25 right so the course outcomes like what will you be able to learn uh, we'll be able to conduct experiments to understand data transfer and memory access instructions now can you tell me what is uh, data transfer and why is it important Exchanging data, sir. Okay. From one device to another device. One device to another device, or it could be probably within the device, you know, or between few components, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So processor is is the part of the system, right, which uh, performs various tasks. So data will be uh, either computed by the processor and given to the uh, connected devices or uh, the connected devices can compute information and send it to the processor 
so let's take uh, the camera as an example right the digital camera so it captures the image and then it sends it to the processor the processor does all the functioning on the image for example all the processing uh, it can be the filters okay it can be the enhancements of the image and then um, you know it saves the image so it needs to send information to the memory okay so that the image is saved so data transfer is one such important thing where you know we need to send information from one point to another okay so this is a key area okay where uh, communication happens okay. data transfer is a key area next when i say memory access instructions what are these memory access So these memory access is nothing but information will be stored as i told you from the processor probably it goes into the memory or from the memory there are some lookup tables that the processor will uh, need to access okay so memory also plays a very important role in this so this information is taken and computed uh, either by the processor or any other connected device now when when suppose i use a temperature sensor okay so this uh, sensor is an externally connected device which uh, senses the information and sends it directly to the processor so this processor uh, if if in case you have an uh, automated uh, home okay so if if you want the levels of your temperatures to be uh greater than 17 degrees or probably a maximum it should uh, reach about 22 23 degrees and if it goes beyond then you know your ac should start so all these you know kind of uh, automation uh, can be developed with the help of embedded system or probably it can be you know as soon as you enter your home uh, you know uh, you will have uh, wi-fi connected devices uh, your smart devices so you can control them using your uh, smartphone so all this is possible only with the help of these embedded systems okay. so it, it's a complex thing actually you know where uh, uh, the applications are limitless you can take it to the next level uh, if in case you know these uh, instructions okay so basically we will be using the uh, arm cortex uh, m4 okay, arm cortex processors the latest uh, processors or those processors that you see in your mobile phones are all you know based on arm cortex okay uh, the next one is uh, construct the code for data processing using arm instructions so data processing could be adding of uh, two bits okay or multiplying them or dividing them or or shifting from one memory location to another memory location right. so to do that you, you must specifically know what kind of instructions work out to do that okay. like in i think microcontrollers you had uh, uh, you know few instruction few set of instructions right so it's almost you know you can you can compare it to those instructions write code for given applications using bit field and process control instructions so process control uh, which means it will have multiple threads okay and uh, what is a thread a thread is a single information and when i say process okay so which means it will have a combination of threads write code for given applications using bit field and process control instructions so so any any given application i gave you an example of home automation so that can be done with the help of these embedded systems okay. so you can develop a code for your dsp applications using the floating point operations or saturation 
uh, operations. Okay, floating point uh, example can be you know you you used eighty eighty six microprocessor, right? So your eighty eighty seven becomes a floating point uh, uh, processor. It's a coprocessor. So which means your eighty six um, will function for the whole numbers and it cannot perform operations on the decimal point. So it needs the help, the external help of another processor. So that can be done with the help of 8087. Okay. So all those uh, floating point instructions will be taken care by 8087, which is automatic coprocessor. And the regular uh, instructions will be taken care by 8086. Okay, so they both, uh, it will have the uh, number, the real number, and uh, the decimal part will be computed by 87. So together, you will have the full decimal number. So you can use this embedded C code to demonstrate uh, peripheral interfacing with ARM development board. Okay. We do have a lot of ARM kits here, right? So we'll be making use of them. Um, we'll be using them for interfacing, okay? So for example, uh, displaying message on the uh, LED screen, okay? A rolling message or probably a static message and then uh, blinking LEDs. Okay? So all these can be performed with the help of this embedded uh, codes. So we will be using embedded C, okay? So, so it's as good as your C language, uh, which is used for embedded purposes. So use embedded C code to demonstrate peripheral interfacing with ARM development board. So interfacing can be, you know, displaying a message as I mentioned, or it could be anything as, as uh, on that sort. Construct interrupt operations for specific application so uh, creating interrupts can someone tell me what is an interrupt i think you would have discussed this in your uh, theory classes isn't it it is used to terminate a code at a particular point okay uh, an, an example can be given Clock pulse in a register, sir. Clock pulse in a register. Okay. Um, can you can you explain it? How does it suffice? Sir, there a clock will be zero one zero one. Is there no sir? Okay. During operations. Okay. That will be a type of entry. Mm, okay. Any other answers? Okay, now you will be having, uh, let's say, five tasks to be done. Okay, task one, two, three, four, five. Now, if all the tasks are asked uh, to perform at the same time, then it's going to be difficult for the processor to execute things at the same time. So, here um, uh, the processor has a method of prioritizing things. Okay. So which is the highest priority, which is medium priority, and which is low priority, and which can be postponed at a later point of time. So those tasks, say out of these five tasks, they say maybe one task is uh, having the highest priority. Okay, So that will be taken on top of the table, and that will be executed. Okay, so say for example during uh, this point of time say the processor was adding uh, you know uh, something okay uh, say it was it was just adding two numbers and then suddenly i gave another task okay where it has to send information to its peripheral device okay so it might probably hold adding this and uh, 
the, the information which is requested by this peripheral okay um, one best example can be when you as soon as connect your pen drive to your uh, systems okay a pop-up message comes right stating that a device has been connected right this port is low you can probably connect it to a faster port something like that so immediate response is needed so so the processor is not it was not idle at that point of time right it was performing some task before you could insert the pen drive right so as soon as you inserted the pen drive it found that you know passing information uh, about this uh, peripheral device is important so it will hold performing the task which was being done currently and immediately it will pop up the message so this can be one example of an interrupt so i hope this point was clear right is it i hope now uh, interrupt the meaning of interrupt is clear yes okay So now, uh, you know, these are the list of experiments that we have. Basically, we have cycle one and cycle two. So cycle two is all about your interfacing, and uh, uh, cycle one is about uh, the information transfer, data data transfer, okay, memory access, and all these uh, instructions. Right? Program involving instructions uh, for transferring data within the processor. So it can be uh, moving one set of uh, contents, which is in the register to probably another register, okay? something like that. And uh, assembly link uh, level language program to demonstrate memory access instruction. So it can be your push pop, right? Where you send information, you receive information. Okay? for various data sizes and addressing modes. So we have learned, right? There are a few uh, types of addressing modes. Can you name a few? Can you name a few addressing modes? You have studied in your microcontroller and all, right? The same thing holds to here as well. Immediate addressing mode. Correct. Direct, indirect. Correct. Right. So all these are, you know, the types of addressing mode based on how you give data, okay, or how it is asked to access data uh, from a location. So if, if you're directly giving the data and telling it to process, then it becomes a direct addressing mode, right? So if you, uh, some other ways of uh, providing data, then you know, it becomes a different type of addressing mode. Then program involving automatic data operations. So as I said, you know, it can be addition of uh, probably 8 bit, 16 bit, 32, 64, right? And uh, the concept of negative carry overflow zero so all these flags will come into picture so you might have to sometimes look into the contents of these flags when you are performing data operations okay. then uh, your logical operations okay so can you give me some example for logical operations so it can be your arithmetic uh, uh, rotate left rotate right handing operation xor operation right so all this can be uh, considered okay uh, next uh, program involving data conversion operations okay the ordering of data okay how you extract information and how you send back so you know that is about your uh, conversions and uh, uh, one one example that i can give you is uh, in your digital logic you have learned learned about binary to access three 
right? So there was a kind of logic involved there where you add three. So similarly here for data conversions, based on the question, okay, operations can be done. Program involving shift and rotate operations. Okay, so shift left, right. Okay, uh, then rotating left, right, you have arithmetic uh, operations as well involving these operations. Then you have uh, program to illustrate bit field processing instruction. Okay, so as I told you, the fields, okay, carry, zero, negative, all these are important. Program to illustrate program uh, flow instruction. Okay, as to how the program is moving from one point to another point. So, uh, you know, basically uh, we can very much see that in your uh, interfacing programs. Then program to illustrate uh, saturation operation. Okay, then floating point. Yes, we have seen that exclusively. Okay. Uh, interfacing and uh, programming uh, general purpose input of the ports. Okay and uh, blinking of LED, uh, you probably give a delay. And then uh, after certain milliseconds uh, or microseconds, then the LED uh, blinks. Okay, so all this can be given. Uh, in your microcontroller, you used to have an instruction called uh, uh, NOP, right? No operation. So similarly, here you will be giving a certain amount of delay and accordingly it will start functioning. Okay. Program to turn the LED on when the button is pressed and off when it is released. Okay. It is as good as your keypad recognizing. So you had done that right in your HDL programs. Uh, generation of uh, pulse width modulated signals for different duty cycles. Okay. Duty cycle is nothing but your on and off ratios. Right, whenever uh, the waveform is high and low. Next, uh, embedded C program to demonstrate serial communication using ARM Cortex development board. So, how this uh, information is passed bit by bit. Okay, and uh, this can be done with the help of your ARM Cortex processor. So, as I was mentioning about your ARM Cortex, so it's good to know its architecture. The types of registers used, which is the higher level, uh, higher order, the lower order, and which are the general purpose, which are the special purpose registers, okay, and what is the capacity of each. So, all these, if you can know, okay, then it will be good. Demonstrate interrupt operations using the embedded C program. So, how interrupts can be done. So, all this it can be seen in interfacing sections then uh, timers stopwatches okay. so you can you can actually see this in uh, uh, the traffic light right where you have exclusive use of timers so as i was mentioning uh, you can download your uh, key microvision four or five is given but i would suggest five and uh, you can actually uh, get started with the programming Okay, you can try to understand and uh, we have uh, m4 evaluation board okay, and we'll be using that and uh, yeah so that's about your uh, list of programs 